Okay, let me hit you with another question then. That was a great answer. Um, if Is there a flow control valve to regulate even flow to four cylinders at once? So I didn't, sorry, I don't know who the question came in from, but he's trying to make, or she, maybe she, uh, is trying to make, operate two scissor lifts simultaneously to lift the rear of a truck up. Ah, so and I suppose you don't want one going fast and the other one going slow <laughs> and it'd be all the lopsidedness <laughs> and then splat. Absolutely, yeah, we don't that definitely that. wouldn't be a good thing. This is actually a really common thing to try and achieve in hydraulics. Um, and it, it's not an easy thing. So as the load changes on cylinders, the flow going to it can change. So in a, in a really simple form, we could um, use, the, use the control valves themselves and we could do it by eye. And, and try and keep things moving evenly. Now that's not a real, really robust way to make things work. Um, we could also put in some flow control valves and set those speeds. Now that can be a little hazardous if we want it to be relatively accurate in when we're doing that, because as the system changes a bit, a little bit of different load, slightly heavier, we move the truck in a slightly different position, then what happens is, is that that speed can change and um, as it changes, things move maybe to a scary point as well. And I totally understand this one. So then we move into some more complex solutions. Now, the first one is, is we, can use, um, we can use a flow divider. And there's two types of flow divider. The first one we've got is a spool type flow divider. And without getting into the nitty gritty of how it works, it will maintain a relatively even flow. So within a percentage range, maybe 10% going to two or four or, or even more different parts of the circuit. Now, these are pretty good, but they can give us some problems when we try to push flow in the opposite direction. So when we want to lower it, it might not necessarily work. And you know, while, while they work in, in really simple circuits, they can be a little hazardous. Or, you know, again, back to that changing the system, we need to be fairly cautious and conscious of what we're changing. Now, I have to say that and, and quite an unconventional view in the world is that one of my favorite ways to do this is using a flow divider, a rotary type flow divider. I happen to have one sitting here ready to play with. Um, now this, this comes from our training Here's kit. one I prepared earlier. Here's one yeah. I prepared earlier. <laughs> there isn't a set of steak knives though. Oh, I've got the steak knives in the van. <laughs> so I tell you what, then, the, the person who asked the hardest question today, I will send them a set of steak knives. Ooh, that could be interesting. <laughs> Accompanied with a hose. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my favourites, and, and it can be quite an unconventional way to do things, is to use a rotary flow divider. Now, essentially what this is, is it's four pumps that are all mechanically linked. Now, this is only a two, but we could have another two on here. And we put one flow in, and then we get our three or our four or two or whatever it is out the other side. Now those four pumps are all equal sized. So whatever oil I put in there, because they're mechanically linked, proportionately they'll put the flow out. We can combine with these as well. So we can come back the other way and we can combine our flows. So it reduces some of the hazards and the problems that we might get with a spool type flow divider. Um, and the really big benefit to using one of these is that it reduces the load, or maybe that's not the right description, it distributes the pressure throughout the system. So if this port here needs more pressure than this one, then we actually see less pressure on the inlet because they're all mechanically linked and we get an intensification effect. Now, that intensification effect can be hazardous as well as helpful. It can be helpful where we reduce the overall system pressure on a, on a, on a complete system. It can be hazardous because we might get too much pressure and we have to design that into the system. So that's, while it's an unconventional, and the reason it's unconventional is that it's a relatively big lump of a component that we might have to put into a circuit. They can be noisy if they're not sized correctly. Um, they do chew up a little bit of power and a little bit of inefficient, but generally not a lot. So unconventional kind of old school thinking and um, we've seen a lot of great success using something like this. The how hard is it to learn how to install something like that and set that system up? 
being the old school unconventional way. <laughs> so the, the design aspects to that, I guess for me, I've been around hydraulics since I was um, down here somewhere, you know, maybe five or six. And so back that, at my height, yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little short. So I guess for me, I've, I've had exposure to these old school thinking without knowing about it for quite a long time. Again, in our courses, we try to incorporate this kind of stuff into all of our courses, even from our very basic stuff, basically because there's a lot of old systems out there that new people are looking after. And without some of that old school thinking and understanding of why things are done, it's really hard to just go, oh, that's a stupid idea. We've got to use this new fangled idea and, and go for it. So we, we try to teach that in all of our courses that the old school thinking, the new school thinking, why each might be applied, why it might be used, um, but certainly not to discredit either way. Um, hydraulics has been around for many, many centuries, uh, and you know, we've, we've got up in our, our meeting room some really cool pictures of some of the people, our forefathers of, of fluid power, and you know, the concepts and principles haven't changed a lot, certainly in the last 50 years or so. And so to continue on with that question about synchronising the cylinders, the next step and probably the most newfangled, so to speak, and the high tech one would be for each cylinder to have its own control valve and also its own monitoring, such as a, an, an LVDT or a, a transducer that tells a control system where that cylinder's moved to. And so then with the use of a PLC or a control system, electrically, using some smarts, the valves will control where it sits and make sure that it goes up at an even rate. That's certainly the most newfangled, you know, high tech sort of version of it, but it could be a very, very expensive solution to a, a really simple problem that a flow divider might be able to fix. You know, we might spend two or $3,000 on a flow divider or $10,000 on a control system to achieve, you know, maybe a tiny little bit more of um, accuracy. Okay, amazing. Well, that was a, uh, a very interesting answer and probably something that a lot of guys that are just new to fluid power or stepping into this may not have known as a solution. So thanks for that. 